you might have seen so many videos on Saturn on my channel and other astrology channels. Saturn is discipline, hard work, commitment, things that we don't like. Sun represents the things that we want. Saturn represents the things that we run away from, or at least our mind wants to run away from, right? But what is one thing which Saturn represents, which is rarely discussed? Very rarely, very, very, very rarely it's discussed. Or even if it is discussed, it is not understood in the right spirit. Okay. So today we are going to discuss about that one special quality of Saturn, which, which is very important. It's even more important than the traits of Sun or Jupiter or Venus. And as usual, if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it down below. And if you want a consultation from me, then please go to my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and he will help you irrespective of what Saturn is doing to you. <laughs> Saturn never does. It's like what we are, Saturn reflects. But people say, right, Saturn did this to me. Saturn did that to me. So see, Saturn can represent late success or it can represent early success. It can represent success in your midlife or in your late 40s, late 50s, depending on your horoscope and depending on your dashas. But what we fail to understand is that irrespective of the age that Saturn represents success, it has one very important quality. What is that? That quality is it teaches you how to digest success. How to digest success. This is if Saturn is well placed in your chart, you don't have to look uh, astrology. You don't have to look at the Lagna chart, the Bhava chart or Navamsa chart. You don't have to look anything. You just have to ask this one question to yourself. Did you become successful sometime in the past? Or maybe you are becoming successful now. Or maybe you think you will be. right? Or at least to keep things short. Did you become successful in some area of your life? You wanted to have a good education. You became very successful. You got very good marks. Like in India especially, you know, marks are a big thing. Or maybe you wanted uh, to marry a particular person and you ended up marrying that person and you have a great marriage. Or you have a great career or, or you know, your finances are extraordinary. You have had huge gains, more gains than anybody can ever imagine. Or you, know, you look the way that every people appreciates. Or you speak the way that everybody likes. Or maybe you crush people the way that everybody wants. <laughs> Irrespective of your qualities, did you achieve success in some point of your life, in some area at least? And now when I'm saying success, I don't mean the regular stuff, you know, regular success. Everybody has some regular bits of success in some area of their life, right? But I am talking of radical success. Unplanned success, not necessarily unplanned, but radical in the sense, a kind of success which is much more than what you expected. Most of the times we have failures and downfalls, which are worse than we expect, right? <laughs> but very few times or other sometimes, depending on our karma, of course, there are situations where we get so much success that it is beyond our imagination, right? So, go down in the memory line and try to think of those moments when you got some grand success, right? Or as I said, much more than you expected. Much, much, much more. It could be in any area of your life. Doesn't matter. Has it ever happened that you are relentlessly getting all the praise from people in some area of your life? Never-ending praise, relentless praise, right? 
Oh, this is exceptional about you. This is great about you. You are too good in this area. You are this, you are that, you are. I wish I was like you in this area. <laughs> so, if you had the fortune or rather maybe misfortune of being extremely successful, even if it was for a very short period of time, and even if it was in one area of your life, then ask yourself this question. Were you able to digest that success? Now, how do you know if you were able to digest it or not? Well, it's very easy to identify. A person who is proud and arrogant has not been able to digest his success. And a person is, who is humble, down to earth, is a person who has digested his or her success. That is why Saturn represents two traits. Humility and humiliation. Right? So what is humility? Humility means to accept the reality as it is. Right? That's what is humility. As Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Dukhalaya Mashashvata this material world is a place of misery. That's what Saturn is, right? At the end. So accepting the fact that this material world is a place of limitations. And who is a place of who who is a bunch of limitations? Me, myself, right? I can be good in some area of life. I can be extraordinary in one area of life, but I may be average or below average or miserably in some other area of life. I might fail in so many other areas of life. Right? So therefore, if you see that a person has obtained great success in some area of life, but you see that the person does not have humility, the person is going on a rampage, boasting about his own success or the person is going on crushing other people, like, how do you say, like a bulldozer. <laughs> then you know that this person has not digested the success that this person has got, which means the person has a terrible Saturn because, see, who cannot digest success? Who One who has got it without putting any efforts. Now you may say, oh, but that's contradictory to law of karma, right? How can somebody do nothing and get a lot of things? How is it possible? Well, it is possible because it might be possible that, or rather it is for sure that this person might have done something in their previous lifetimes because of which this person is getting much more than what this person deserves in this life. Have you seen some people? They get some grand success in some area of life. There are certain people you will see that although they have got this success, but they did not put in that level of hard work to get it. There was some luck factor involved and then they got it, right? So then these people, if they do not have a general humility in life, they cannot digest it. They feel that because they have not put in the hard work and the effort, so then they feel that they will be like this in every area of life. Yeah, they, they feel it like this. But that's how law of karma works. We might be very good in some area of life and we may fail miserably in some other area of life, right? But the ego, the mind, or rather, you know, our consciousness, which is now tainted by materialistic uh, elements of this material nature things that because I was successful in this area, so I will be very successful in other areas of life also but that's not mandatory because you may also fail miserably in other areas of life. At the same time you are very successful in some area of life, right? <laughs> so therefore, those who get success but are not humble will very soon be humiliated. Should I repeat? Those who get success without humility will very soon be humiliated. 
you will see their pride is crushed. Saturn does it and it does it very badly. Or rather beautifully. <laughs> he does it beautifully, but it is not beautiful for the person who is experiencing this. It's pathetic, it's terrible, it's miserable. The person feels like dying. As the Bhagavad Gita says, you know, for a person who is honored, dishonor is worse than death, right? And therefore, you will see many times people, when they get success in some area of life, they just trample on others. They just, you know, see other people as, you know, cats and dogs or rats. As in Hindi, they say, Kide makoro ki tara dekhte, dusro ko. Right? So therefore, if you unfortunately belong to that category of people who has had some, you know, grand success in life, in some area at least, but you are fully puffed up, you are not humble, then you have to realize that H for humility, H for humiliation. Humiliation is coming. It's next. The Bible says, pride cometh before the fall. Right? So, any text, any divine text you take, either, either it's the Bhagavad Gita or the Bible, or you go to any other religion, you will find the same thing. The essence is the same. Right? So therefore, if you want to know how your Saturn is, this is one shortcut. You should check. Right? Now you may say, oh yeah, I got success, but I am not humble. I like to look down on others. others. I like to trample others. I feel I am God. Right? So what should I do now? What's the solution? Should I be like this? Or will I be like this? Well, yes, you can be like this if you don't change. If you do not take steps. <laughs> this will not go off uh, for no reason. Right? So the best thing for you to do if you fall in this category is to understand the greatness of God. Right? Like for example, my Shiksha Guru used to say, a person in India as per, you know, Indian denominations of money. Can be Hazarpati, he can be Lakpati, he can be Karodpati, he can be Arabpati, right? Millionaire, billionaire, trillionaire. But can anybody become Lakshmipati? Can anybody? Well, nobody, right? Who is Lakshmipati? He is Lord Narayana himself. Is Lord Hari himself. So you may be a millionaire, billionaire, zillionaire. <laughs> but you will never have all the wealth of the world. And even if you have it, hypothetically, imagine you have all the wealth of the world. You will have it for a very short period of time. Maybe one year, two years, three years, ten years. Or maybe a hundred years maximum. After a hundred years, you are not the richest person anymore. Because you don't exist. <laughs> right? So, the more you are aware of the greatness of God, right? As the Srimad Bhagavatam says, Yam Brahma Varuna Indra Rudra Maruta Tunavanti Divya Istavai Yam Brahma Varuna Indra Rudra Maruta Tunavanti Divya Istavai Yam Raj Brahma Indra, Varuna, Maruts, Yam Brahma, Varun, Indra, Stunavanti. What they are doing? What all these personalities they are doing? Stunavanti, Divya Istavai. They are doing Stuti, divine chants. Yes, Vedai Sangha Padakram. Even the Vedas are singing. About whom? About you, me. <laughs> No, not about any of us. They are not speaking uh, of themselves. They are doing Stuti for Lord Narayana. He is the greatest. He is, he is the greatest. And for eternity, there can be nobody like him. Right? There can be no equal or forget 
anybody being greater than him. So once you realize that whatever I have is temporary, and even if I have it, whose is it? It's not mine because Krishna says in the Gita, Yad yad vibhuti mat sattvam shri mat urjita mevava tatta devava gachatvam mama tejo amsha sambhavam. Mama tejo amsha sambhavam. Whatever Arjuna you see in this world, anything beautiful, anything attractive, anything charming, it's a spark of my splendor, Krishna says in the Gita. So because of our karma, that spark from so somebody like for example Krishna is Lakshmi Pati, he is like the richest person. So if somebody has a karma to become a billionaire, then that that person uh, for some period of time gets some opulence of Krishna. Right? He will have a huge bank balance, right? Or whatever, like land or stocks or whatever, anything. Huge net worth. And then what happens? This stays with him for some time. But does it stay for eternity? No. Till the time the karma is there. The fruit of your karma is there. It will stay till then. But for Krishna it's not like this. He will have it always for eternity. And not only million dollars, billion dollars, trillion dollars. Anand Koti Brahmandanaya. Unlimited universes for unlimited period of time. Endless. And more than anybody can ever get. Right? So once you realize this, you will realize that all the things that I have, these are very temporary. And even if they are with me at this moment, and everybody is cheering me, gearing me, applaud, applauding me, but it's ultimately coming from Krishna himself because he says, you know, Mama Tejam Shasambhava. Right? It's coming from me. It's a spark of my splendor. It's a very tiny spark. Have you seen sparks? It will come and it will go. That's what it is. Spark of my splendor. Just a spark. That's all. <laughs> it's temporary. It sparks, comes and goes, comes and goes. So it's like Jugunu that. Uh, Fly, which you know keeps emanating light in the night. But as soon as the sun appears, the Vedas, the scriptures compare uh, the living entity and God to be like a jugnu and the sun. What happens when the sun appears in the morning? All the jugnus they disappear, right? <laughs> even if they are, and if they, even if they are emanating light, it's of no use because the sun is there. Sun is shining, it's bright, it's brilliant, it's magnificent, it's magnanimous, it's beyond the capacity of any jugnu to shine, right? So we are like these jugnus, and God is like the sun, he's great, he's the greatest, right? So once we know this, then we become humble and we save ourselves from humiliation, right? Thank you very much.